Good evening, welcome back to Let's Play Darkness Within in Pursuit of Loth and Older. When we left off last time, I was really lost and stumped, didn't know what to do, as happens more often than I would like. But I went all over the place off screen. I tried figuring all kinds of stuff out, combining all different kinds of things. Oh, that was one thing that I did figure out. I couldn't figure out anything to do with it once I've got it, but Clark Field's restaurant. Or restaurant. Residence. Good grief. Okay, so we have this shovel with the white mud on it. But Clark Field is dead, so who's digging there? Someone entered Mr. Field's residence and dug somewhere. Who might that be? And you would think that would be related to the collapsed ceiling, like they're obviously trying to dig that out, but he's not putting that together. More importantly, as I'm going through, I, and I went everywhere, I went all the way back in here, I went down in all the catacombs, I went to our office, little through, I went all over the place, and finally, as I'm standing here, I happen to look up. These boards are a different color, how suspicious. Maybe there's something we can do with them. Uh, yeah, I think there's a trap door up there, but I can't reach it. However, I do have a hook on a stick. Now I can reach it, and I'm betting somewhere up in here is where we're going to use the paintbrush with the ink on it. It just seems this is where we found the brush, where we put the thinner on it, where we found the ink. I'm almost positive we're going to need to use it in this cabin somewhere, so let's see what's up here. It seems there's a room up there. Yeah, cl climb. There we go. Alright. I'm really excited about this. What are we gonna find? So what is that? Fish? What are these? Uh, it looks like ocean life. That one's a fish. This one's like a, a jellyfish. But why is someone collecting these? What's this one up here? Looks like a different type of jellyfish, maybe. Okay, and I don't think we can do anything with them, but we can look at them at any rate. Fish again, another fish. Everything's looking spider. More or less normal so far. I mean, it's weird to have these, but they're not like freakish monstrosities. Huh. There is one missing. Now, ah, what's this? Oh. My aim in writing these notes is to document information of archaeological importance. No, this is not scientific. Even so, I feel an urgent need to write. Sitting here, I am surrounded by a dark and obscure jungle. My investigation has led me here, accompanied by my guide, who grudgingly agreed to come with me at the behest of his village. And now I wait for him to hack a path through the dense underbrush, thick ivy, and high grass. I will continue writing, although the skin is peeling off my hands and they ache unbearably. Ew. Also, I hate to think what effect the humidity will have on my papers. Neither do I know how far away I am from the jungle village that I left six days ago, nor do I know how much farther I have yet to go. My guide must stop to rest frequently. I know that he's becoming increasingly afraid of me. My nervousness grows as I approach my goal in this dense jungle where I suspect no human being has set foot before. Well, if no one's set foot before, then how's your guide getting you through? It may very well be that I am mad. The thought has crossed my mind some nights since leaving that jungle village whose name I can't pronounce. Leaving that disgusting village was a relief. I continue to travel through the forest with my guide. He doesn't speak my language, and in spite of the fact that he is experienced, I think we may be lost. At a town 147 miles away from that jungle village, the locals warned me about cannibals in the region that don't welcome strangers. They told me that it would not be wise to go there, but the quietly whispered words of the townspeople aroused in me a feeling of curiosity that was impossible to ignore. I was told that the other tribes in the region have an animistic religion, while this one follows a very dark monotheistic one. The people who I spoke with told me that tourists, scientists, and other travelers are frequently attacked when entering the region. I heard some disgusting rumors about missing people ending up as fair on the banquet tables at strange nocturnal festivals. You heard all this and thought, hmm, that's a good place to go. Is this person tied up or missing hands? They're obviously distraught. Oh, hey! Is that one of the bugs? And the leaf, the bug and the leaf! Make the connection, Howard. Come on. It's totally the bug in the leaf. 
So this is someone who's having hallucinations because they drunk the potion. When I first set eyes on the village, the thing that caught my attention was the strange architectural style of it, nothing like a primeval village. I stayed on a hill to the south of the village, observing it for a long time. The wide spiral-shaped huts with walls made of dried mud, in contrast to the green background, were reminiscent of some crustaceous sea creature. I now know that their design was derived from a far more splendid architecture. The colossal triathlon which stands at the entrance to the village is decorated with carved figures of what looks like writing. On closer examination, the size of this ancient trilithon, trilith I don't know that word, was awe-inspiring. I immediately understood that it had come from somewhere else and had been transported here with great difficulty from some faraway place. I spent fourteen fear-filled days and nights in that cannibal village and witnessed many disgusting and vile things. We had great difficulty communicating, although some of the villagers understood a few words of my language. They treated me kindly and were quite hospitable from the start, as though they recognized me somehow. I was never able to figure out why. Even though I repeatedly told them my name, they addressed me by another similar name. I can't pronounce it, but the closest approximation is... Laus? Wait. No. Is that an I? Ehuth? Ehuth? Is this Lothanolder? Just looking at the spelling of that word, it's, it's somewhat similar. And this person is a jerk, because they were hospitable and kind, but he keeps calling them disgusting. As the days passed, I noticed that they treated me with increasing respect. This did not change my feelings towards them. The diabolical dances started to be performed during the last days of my visit there, and I thought that they were performed because of a great fear that was felt towards the jungle. These dances were accompanied by cacophonous hymns and only terminated when all the participants smacked their palms crazily on the ground, and there was a group of people who said to me that they were going to some ruins in the depths of the jungle. But I secretly watched them, and noticed that after these silent, regular nocturnal visits, when they returned, sweating, there were fewer people present than the number who had set out. Anyways, I don't want to spend any more time writing about them. We will be leaving here shortly. These may be my final entries. The pain that I feel is gradually getting worse. Even walking has started to take its toll. My body is becoming contorted and deformed. Just holding this pen is difficult. This is nothing but a curse. For some time, I've been seeing spiral ruins and ornamental blocks with hieroglyphics. Hang on. Nothing? Okay. Or drawings on them. The serpentine branches of grotesque trees clutch at the sky, and silent wells are open to the dark depths of the earth, leading me to believe that I am pro approaching my goal. I am searching for some nameless ruins in the middle of the jungle. Beside me, my skinny cannibal guide keeps looking over his shoulder at me in fear, as if I, too, were one of the wild creatures of this jungle. Although we have traveled north up to this point, I can see from the moss on the bark of the trees that we have changed direction and are heading east. I don't trust this cannibal with me. He watched passively while holding his machete in his hand as a crazy gorilla attacked me. I will not forget his hopeless expression when I won that bloody struggle. Ooh. Well, maybe part of why he's hoping that you die is because... You treat him with contempt. All right. That's the only thing back here. Hmm. Whose journal is that? Okay. Anything else to click on from here? Or is it time to step forward? And go that way. We can't get closer to this stuff. All right, all right. Over here, then. star chart. For some time, we have been searching for a particular book, the Timbor, or maybe it's Timbor, I don't know. It is the translated version of the book called Infinitus, which is impossible to find. The Infinitus was written in Latin in a very confusing manner, and was tributed to Marinus, who was an alchemist and demonologist who wrote the ancient and obscure book entitled Primitiva. It is related that he died in his laboratory in a fire which broke out suddenly. His corpse was never found. It was really difficult to find the time bore. I'm going to say, I don't know, time bore? I'm going to say Timobor because I think it sounds better. Because even mentioning its name was enough to draw the attention of the ones who know what it really is. The book had to be hunted down at all costs, since the knowledge it contains is of infinite importance to our ultimate goal. According to the Timobor, which includes a lot of confusing diagrams and drawings, with the right timing and preparation, things can be summoned from spheres beyond this universe or even death. With this ancient knowledge, things long forgotten can be discovered again. Nothing interesting. 
With the aid of the map, we discovered the place where the ones who will be summoned in order to achieve our goal lay. Even though the old text gave us information about them, the locations of the tombs were not specified due to the need for complete secrecy. The discovery was made last month by Mr. Kerwin. Or the discovery made last month by Mr. Kerwin was important. They are in the crypts below a tomb, which stands in a very old cemetery, in which interments had been prohibited some time ago. The aforementioned tomb is registered in the name of Samuel William Poor. As a result of this information, it was determined who would be awakened from their long sleep. All the preparations for the turning back were done by the, under the sign of the Star Pleiades by Mr. Kerwin. It is only a matter of time. When the ones who are waiting silently in their dark tombs for this day to come return, everything will have begun. That seems important. Hmm. Samuel William Poor. I think I've heard this name before, but I can't recall when. Uh, I'd better remember this. It may be important in the future. Where did we come across that name? Maybe in one of the newspaper clippings? In Clark Field's house? Okay, and let's see if there's anything else. Oh, some tombs are mentioned here. Are those people looking for a crypt? Well, it certainly sounds like it. Okay, and then we're just going to go here again and make sure there's nothing important here. Okay, having, and, and you know, now that we found stuff on the other page. So. All right, well, that gave us some stuff. And we can look, I'm excited to look in this, but first we're gonna have everything else because that seems to be kind of the focal point of the room. Holy cow, this is the loose translation of the upper portion, which was written in a strange cipher system. To make a talisman, put fennel seeds, frankincense, and quicksilver under a crystal with the character of the Pleiades. Pleiades, I could be saying it wrong. The name of the Star Pleiades was just assumed from its sign. Its name is not directly mentioned in the passage. Due to the influence of Pleiades, which had been drawn at the right time, a properly prepared talisman can gather demons and spirits of deceased people. Thus one can summon them and learn from them the things and secrets one wishes by using the talisman. Huh. Who are they going to summon? Nothing? They're trying to summon dead folk, Howard. That's a clue. He doesn't care. And is that the only book? That's the only book, yeah. All right. It's really bugging me that I can't get over to that shelf. All right, and it doesn't look like anything with the bed, so let's take a look through here. What do we got? What? I think this telescope is looking at the Northwood Mountain. Is there a cave entrance there? Is there? Well, that seems important. Uh, does that help us with the map? Where's Northwood Mountain? Wolf Spray, Red Town, Wolfstone. He doesn't know. Well, maybe we can just go there now that we know there's a cave entrance. Let's try this again, just in case. So, okay. Yeah, that's a cave entrance, and that's I think that's the important thing to see here. So, but we're still left with the brush with the ink on it. Where are we going to use that? I don't we want to use it on any of the books. I was sure this was going to be where it would come up. I'm not going to go on any of these. Let's try it from the closer screen, but I still don't think so. It doesn't really make sense. Okay, no. I don't think we're going to use it on this book. Maybe it goes somewhere else in the cabin. Or maybe it's not for the cabin. Alright, I think right now, I want to try to step outside and see if we can try to find that cave. mountains from here. That's just the 
Forest. Northwood Forest. Alright, let's head out and see. You wish to leave. Yes, please. Ugh, oh, no. Well. Alright, let's get back in here then. Probably missing something here. for tombs. Is this related to someone digging somewhere? No. They're looking for this tomb? Maybe there's something else. Maybe I need to go look for that name again. Samuel William Thor. track down that name. I don't think there were any... Well, there were letters in here, so let's see if any of those mention him. In you go. Alright, there's a ton of letters in this one. Samuel William Thorpe. Okay, not that, not that. Nope, not here. No. This doesn't look good. A no, but we'll hit it in case. Wait, this is, no, we had this for someone's date, but who's returning? We don't know. John Doe. Um, nothing. Still nothing. Now, here's the book. As told in the Timbalbore, that's important. No? Just our code. EB. No, that's it though. Alright, none of these. Alright, let's take a look in this one. It's not looking promising either. I start to make some progress in this game. And I'm almost immediately stopped again. Alright, so I know this is kind of an abrupt change. All of a sudden I'm here. I looked everywhere. Everywhere. Could not figure out what to do. I went back to all the offices, back to my house, all over the place. Finally, I found something. So here we are back in Ivar Bergen's cabin under the uh, trap door in the room with the switch, obviously. And right next to the switch... There's some putty here. It may be useful. So now we've got putty. Hooray, this is a thing we didn't have before. So, let's see, what can we... Some putty I took from the room. It just looks like putty. Can we mix it with our brush? No, that was kind of a bad idea, anyhow. All right, well, let's actually put the putty up here. 
Okay, let's put our phone to it back. We haven't needed that in a while. There we go. That looks good. What about that blank paper? Or, oh, there's the little statues. And there's that one that's got the spiral on the back and the defaced markings. Maybe we can, like, press it on the spiral. Okay, so it's in here, and it's this guy sitting on his little chair. Here we go. All right, you. So let's put some putty on that spiral. Ooh, oh, that's a lot more putty than I realized we had. All right, um, what did that do for us? Where? Why would it be at the very back? That's so obnoxious. Putty I marked. Okay, sweet. Can we put this on our map, maybe? Um, that's not the button I meant to hit. Let's go here. And, like, press it onto it. Because there's the eyes, so maybe if we match up the eyes. Uh, no. no. That's not looking like we can do anything with the map. Mm, well, we've got that blank paper. So let's look at that. Because it does, when you hold, hold an object over it, it flashes. So obviously something can interact with it. All right, paper. I'm coming for you. No. Well, dang it. What about brush I haven't figured out the brush has to do something in here I don't know the brush and the special putty so we can paint that design somewhere what I've painted the putty with the brush all right um that's something. okay so we've got our spiral our eye and a tree Let's try these on the paper, maybe. Come on. Ah, oh, yes, this should work. All right. I don't know what we're gonna do with it, but we've got, can we press this onto the map? Please, please, please. Ah. No. We were on a roll. Okay, um, well, let's look at this. It's the same thing. I spiral. I think those might actually be scales. So. Alright, what can we do with that? I spiral scales. There's got to be somewhere we can use it. There's anything in the kitchen, but maybe back upstairs. I don't know what these specimen jars are for. This was just that book. There's nothing we can do with that. Okay, so maybe not up here. I think actually we don't really have anything to interact with here. Um, I'm trying to collect all my scattered thoughts. I did a whole lot of roaming around all over the place, and there are still some things that we can interact with that I haven't found the correct object to use yet. But between here and Clarkfield's house, I don't remember just which was what. Uh, Let's take a look here again. Okay, it's not going to be anything with these letters. Not this 
box. Okay, let's just back out of here. I don't think it's anything in this. Oh, here. What have we got in here? And it's just the inkwell and this paper. This isn't gonna help us. No. Alright, maybe we need to go. Do I really want to go back to Clark Fields? I think I do. I think. Let me think about the basement again. Is there anything in the basement? There's the room we got the putty in, but there's nothing else to really interact with there. We did what we could with the statues. to move back to Clark Field's house. I could be absolutely wrong. And it's frustrating me that I have not found anything out here. We can look at the woods. That's it. Ooh, Northwood Forest is so frightening. Um, so, no, I don't think... Uh, oh my gosh, I don't want to go back in there, but now I'm thinking, what if I need to use it in conjunction with that telescope? Because there's the cave there. Let's just run up and try it. I don't know what... It, I don't see how it would really help, but we'll try. We'll try. Because when you're looking out this, the telescope, you can access your inventory. So it just makes me think there's the possibility that there's something we're supposed to do with that. Alright, find the cave. Ah, uh, this way. Ooh, is that a cave? Oh, I see. It is, Howard. So. No. Okay. Back to Clark Field's house. Come on, you can do this. Oh, there we are. And actually... This is taking up quite a lot of time. It's probably about time to wind down the episode. So we'll go ahead and end it here. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back next time. Um, I'm going to look around at Clark Field's house off screen just to see if that's at all the right track. I don't want to spend a ton of time looking there and then possibly not find anything. So regardless, one way or another, when I meet you next time, we will be prepared to move ahead in the story.